We've all heard the hype that mixed reality or spatial computing is the next big thing. Imagine a pair of glasses that could show you all of the apps that you need, allowing you to work anywhere you want. But the crazy part is that the tech already exists. And while these headsets may not be as small or as seamless as a pair of glasses, they enable true mixed reality. But they're all kind of expensive, or at least they were until now. This is the MetaQuest 3S. It's a VR headset that does real mixed reality and accurate hand tracking. It allows you to pin virtual windows all around your house and work anywhere you want. But it's only 299 US dollars, making it the most affordable mixed reality device we've ever seen. But is it any good? And what can you actually do with this headset besides play VR games? Well, I'm a home office worker, and I wanted to see if this headset could be used for productivity. In fact, the video you're watching right now was written and edited inside of the Quest 3S. Over the past 30 days, I've experienced the highs and the lows of using this headset for productivity, and I want to share my experience with you. Oh, and by the way, Meta was kind enough to send me the 3S before it officially released so I could test it, but they did not sponsor this video. So everything you're about to see and hear are my own experiences and opinions on this device. This video does have a sponsor though, but more on that a bit later. Let's dive into the Quest 3S and see what this headset can do for productivity. Welcome back to Work From Hype. We'll start with a brief look at the hardware of this headset, and then we'll get into how I've been using it for productivity. In my opinion, the build quality of the 3S is quite nice for this price range. To give you guys some context, I'm not a hardcore VR user, but I'm not new to VR either. The physical features of the 3S are quite similar to the Quest 2, for better and for worse. The good stuff is still here, like the head straps. They're easy to adjust and generally comfortable, but the 3S also has some of the downsides of the Quest to as well. Like the lenses, the position of the lenses cannot be adjusted to fit all head sizes. You're limited to one of three positions. But the similarities end when you move to the front of the headset. There's a new camera and sensor system here, which is what enables high quality pass through video. The 3S also has infrared sensors, which allow you to use hand tracking even in rooms with low light. And in my opinion, it's these new cameras and sensors that make the 3S such an interesting product. In all fairness, the screen and the lenses inside the 3S are identical to the much older Quest 2, but in my experience, the cameras completely change how it feels to wear this headset. You can actually see the world around you. You don't feel isolated, unless of course you want to, in which case you can turn off the cameras and place yourself in a nice virtual environment like the beach or a mountain cabin. But for me, the pass-through video is the killer feature on this headset, and it's what I was most excited to test during my month-long experiment. Speaking of which... So here's the plan. I'm going to use the Quest 3S every day for the next 30 days. I wanna see if I can actually be productive while wearing this headset. I'm gonna try and integrate mixed reality into my home office workflow, which means I'll be using this headset to do research and to do some writing, and hopefully by the end of this 30 day challenge, successfully edit a video inside of this headset. I should point out I am not an extreme challenge YouTuber. I won't be using this headset 24 seven. After all, the battery only lasts about two and a half hours. Instead, the goal is to use the headset at least once a day to get work done in my office. But first, I need to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Zilul. Zilul is an online store for glasses, and they have a ton of unique styles. And they also offer blue light reduction glasses, which have been very useful for me because I've been spending a ton of time inside of a VR headset for this project. So these light filtering glasses have been been helpful in letting my eyes recover after spending hours in VR or at my computer. Zilul also makes ordering prescription glasses effortless, but I'll tell you more about that towards the end of this video. Right now, I need to get back to the experiment. The first thing I did was scan my office to create my virtual workspace. The 3S has depth sensors, which make the process very simple. The tech works, and it's impressive, but it's not perfect. 
After pinning some windows around the room, I noticed over time the windows do drift a little bit from their original positions, especially if you take the headset off and then come back to it. You'll find yourself having to reset your layout from time to time. But overall, the experience of moving around your room and interacting with these virtual windows works well. It's day two, and now that my workspace is set up, it's time to see what type of productivity apps are available for the Quest 3S. And let me address the elephant in the room here. I know the 3S is not aimed at office workers. It's really marketed more like a game console. I mean, Batman is right there on the box. But if you open the App Store, there is absolutely a category for productivity apps on this thing, and I wanted to explore what was possible. And to be completely honest, there aren't a ton of options at the moment. The basics are here, but none of my personal go-to apps were available. Now that said, it's early days for this headset, and I'm optimistic that more developers will bring their apps to Horizon OS. The one app I do miss is Spotify, which is my preferred music platform. At the time of making this video, there is no Spotify app on the Quest. To access Spotify, you have to use the web browser, and that leads to another limitation. When I minimize the browser window, the audio from Spotify stops playing. I've done a bit of research and found that there are some workarounds for this issue, and it's not an issue on other headsets, so hopefully this gets fixed for the 3S. So for now, I've been putting up live DJ sets on YouTube and pinning those videos in the corner of my room to add some background music while I work elsewhere in the office. You know what, this might actually be an upgrade. It's day five and I'm starting to become much more comfortable with this headset. And it turns out my most used app on the 3S is the built-in web browser. In fact, I'm quickly realizing that the Quest has a lot in common with Google Chromebooks. And I know, nobody likes Chromebooks. They have a pretty bad reputation. Most of them are pretty sticky because they all were in a school at one point in time. But hear me out. Most of the tools that I use for research and writing are web-based. Some of the obvious examples include Google Docs, which runs perfectly in the Quest browser. Here we go, using an air mouse to do things in Google Docs. Double pinch. Oh my God, what is this? as does Notion, which is my personal favorite writing and note-taking platform. And while native apps would be preferable, the browser versions are working just fine for now. I'm officially one third of the way through this experiment, and when I'm wearing the headset, I will typically have a primary window with Notion open for taking notes and writing. Next to Notion, I'll usually have a window open with YouTube, which doesn't sound like a productivity app, but because I'm a content creator, I like having a YouTube window open so I can get inspiration for the video, review past videos to see what worked and what didn't, and to research thumbnails. And finally, if I need to research some specific product, or look up some information for one of my videos, I'll have a window open with Google search at all times. Now, to be completely clear, none of what I'm doing right here is a breakthrough of spatial computing or anything like that. All of this can be easily done at a desk with three monitors plugged into your PC. But what I like about this setup is that I don't have to stay here. You see, one of the biggest surprise moments of this experiment came when I took the headset outside. And it's hard to describe this experience. It's like I'm breathing fresh air and I can feel the breeze on my arms, but I'm still wearing a bulky VR headset. I'm outside, but also not outside. It's kind of dystopian, but also incredible. And portability is one of the main benefits of a headset like this. You can work anywhere you want and bring all of your virtual windows with you. Or at least you can if all of your work takes place inside of a web browser like mine. By day 12, my focus shifted from research to writing. And while the floating keyboard that you get inside the Quest headset works perfectly fine for Google searching short phrases, there is no way anyone could script an entire video using this keyboard. Thankfully, the Quest 3S supports Bluetooth keyboards, and so I paired my good old Nufi Air 75 mechanical keyboard and got to writing. So I needed to create a standing setup for my Quest. I took this old music stand that used to hold a drum machine and I I turned it into a DIY podium desk for my keyboard. And with my headset and podium, I was able to stand up and type anywhere I wanted. I had no real issues using a Bluetooth keyboard with this headset, but connecting a Bluetooth mouse was a slightly different story. The mouse works inside of browser windows and different menus, but it doesn't work like a typical mouse cursor. You'll still need to use a Quest controller or to use hand tracking to navigate the rest of the operating system.
So I'm officially past the halfway point of this experiment, but things are about to get more complex. The end goal for this experiment is to see if I can edit a video using the headset, and I have no idea how that's going to go. I did some digging in the Meta App Store, and unfortunately, I couldn't find any native photo or video editing apps for the Quest 3S. And this is, of course, expected. VR headsets like the Quest are a 3D platform. 3D is what they do best, so of course, there are some excellent 3D modeling apps, but no traditional 2D photo or video editing software. But that's okay, because similar to the browser, the Quest has another built-in app to cover the gap, and this time it's Remote Desktop. The premise is simple. With the Remote Desktop app, you can connect your Quest to your PC and create a virtual monitor in mixed reality. And it works surprisingly well. It's also completely wireless, which is important. If I had to stay tethered to my PC with a wire, I may as well just look at a normal monitor. But because it's wireless, I can set up anywhere in my house. Going into this experiment, I knew the Quest could connect to a PC to play PC VR games, but I was happy to discover that there is full Mac OS support, which means I can connect to my Mac Studio and run all of my video and photo editing software through the headset. I was also impressed by how customizable these virtual monitors are. You can resize the window using your hands and it changes changes the resolution and aspect ratio coming from your desktop, and it makes the remote desktop app even more usable. It's day 20, which means there are only 10 days left in this experiment, and I'm beginning to see the limitations of this headset. I've started editing the video you are now watching in Adobe Premiere Pro, which is running on my Mac and then being streamed with remote desktop to the Quest headset. And I have to say, overall, it's impressive how well this works. I'm able to make cuts and edits in my timeline anywhere in the house. However, this use case also draws attention to the 3S's biggest weakness, which is its screen resolution. In real world terms, this means that text is readable and I can use software like Premiere Pro or Adobe After Effects, but over time my eyes would fatigue much faster than they would with a standard monitor. I found myself drifting closer to the virtual window over time to keep everything clear, and there is definitely a sweet spot, and if you leave the sweet spot, your windows can get a bit blurry. But to be fair to this headset, complex tasks like video editing are not what this headset was designed for. That's why I framed this video as an experiment and not a traditional review. I know I am pushing the outer limits of the Quest 3S, and I am fully aware that the more expensive Meta Quest 3 has a 30% higher resolution screen than the 3S, and it would absolutely be a better candidate for this use case, but I was more curious to see just how far you could push a $299 headset, and overall it's handled this experiment much better than I expected. Okay, I know I sounded like really optimistic in that last clip, but uh, I gotta be honest with you guys, it's day 25 and this experiment is almost over and I've all but given up on video editing inside the headset. It works, but it's just a bit too much for my eyes to handle. So instead of editing the video in VR, I've been playing with images and designing the thumbnail for this video in the headset, which has been a good change of pace. I could never use this headset exclusively for photo editing because VR displays are designed for gaming and high speeds and not color accuracy, but it has been good for giving my eyes fresh perspectives while working on thumbnails. It's the final day of this month long experiment and the video is almost done. Although I have to be honest with you guys, after a certain point, most of the real editing took place on my traditional monitor. But to the Quest's credit, I was able to do most of the scripting, planning, and writing for this video in mixed reality. And since it's the final day, I've decided that I've earned myself a break. So instead of using the headset to be productive, I've decided to use the headset for what it was actually designed to do you know, relaxing and playing games. I tried Batman Arkham Shadow, which comes free with the 3S. I played some rhythm games, which are always great in VR and a good way to get up for 10 to 20 minutes throughout the workday. And I'm happy that an affordable headset like this will bring these experiences to more people. So what have I learned over the past 30 days? Well, I learned that for $299, you can get a headset that does real mixed reality, and it absolutely can be used for productivity, but the tech has its limits. 
For me, the 3S was at its best for ideation, or coming up with new ideas and doing some research in writing around those ideas. The 3S was not great for complex software tasks like video editing, but then again, maybe that's not a limitation of mixed reality, but rather a limitation of the screen resolution on the 3S. As for recommendations, well, if you've never owned a VR headset before and are budget conscious, the 3S is the headset I would recommend. However, if you're interested in productivity and you want to take my experiment to the next level, the Quest 3 with its superior screen resolution may be worth the extra cost. Thanks again to the team at Meta for letting me test drive this headset early, and thank you to Zlul for sponsoring this video. Speaking of which, in addition to the blue light glasses that I've been wearing, Zlul also offers prescription eyewear, and they make the ordering process super easy. All you have to do is enter your prescription information, select a few styles, and then you can use augmented reality to do a virtual try-on. And there are styles to fit any occasion, from futuristic and modern frames to classic and vintage inspired styles. But my favorite part is that Zlul allows you to filter by the shape of your face, so you only have to browse frames that will work with your unique face shape. So whether it's prescription eyewear, sunglasses, or blue light reduction glasses, if you're looking for an affordable way to try out some new styles, head over to zlul.com to learn more, and be sure to use my discount code WFH10 for a discount on your order. In the end, despite my tired eyes, I am still excited about mixed reality and what comes next. If this is what's possible with a budget headset in 2024, then the future is wide open. And maybe my next home office will have a few less screens and a bit more open space. As always, my name is Nick Moe. Thanks for watching Work From Hype, and I will catch you guys in the next one.